and thank you for joining us to hear the Puck Board story and how Open Innovation Labs at Red Hat helped transform the U.S. Armed Forces in new ways of working. My name is Darcy Fitzpatrick, and I'm a product design lead with Open Innovation Labs, and I'm based in the Pacific Northwest. Also with me today is... David uh, Mud Willard. Uh, I am a program manager with the Defense Innovation Unit out of Silicon Valley in California. Great, and I'm Haytham Shaheen, a consulting engineer with Open Innovation Labs, uh, and on the Puckboard project, I was the technical lead. So in today's session, we're gonna cover a couple points. Uh, one, we're gonna review the, all the partners involved in, in making the Puckboard project happen, how we leveraged a human-centered approach as the foundation for our work, uh, the skills and DevOps principles we, we upskilled the team on during our lab's uh, residency, and finally, where the Puckboard team is today post the residency uh, and how they're doing with uh, these principles that they uh, captured throughout the lab's program. So I'll hand it over to you, David, to discuss the partners involved. Thank you, Haytham. So this project started uh, with my organization, the Defense Innovation Unit, uh, taking a, an email from a couple of U.S. Marine Corps aviators that reached out and said, hey, we have this problem. Can you help us? And so as we investigated uh, the problem set, um, uh, we pulled in some folks from the U.S. Air Force as well as the U.S. Navy and realized this was common across the services right, in their aviation branches. Um, and the problem that we were trying to solve uh, um, was the issue of flight scheduling. How do you take a very complex collection of people and airplanes and events with the constraints that exist in legal uh, and regulatory uh, frameworks um, and create a schedule and do it in a timely fashion. Uh, this problem had been intractable um, and had existed time immemorial for aviators uh, and had stubbornly resisted all previous attempts um, to automate. And so we took advantage of a relationship that the Navy had with Red Hat for, through their open innovation lab and we brought together uh, some technically minded uniformed aviators um, that came with some tech skills but did not have production software experience and weren't used to doing the full stack development. We brought them together along with uh, some folks that, uh, that had the skill set for um, understanding the problem set. And we worked uh, in the Open Innovation Lab experience and as Haytham said, uh, developed some of those skills um, and then moved forward. So the first step of that was getting everybody together uh, and then we handed them off to the team led by Darcy for a human-centered approach to the problem. So we definitely took a human-centered approach for this very human problem that was incredibly manual. And um, we actually had a team that went on the ground in San Diego. And really what we did is we started doing qualitative research with Marines. Um, so we had narrowed down a subset of the problem space because this was a huge problem that was DOD-wide. Um, of just manual scheduling. So um, there's multiple, multiple aircraft and multiple, multiple people within squadrons that are in need of training. And the daily scheduling and weekly scheduling and monthly and yearly scheduling of all of those efforts were being done manually. So, um, so what we wanted to do is just get on the ground and start learning from people. And so we narrowed it down to um, Osprey squadrons where we were communicating with people directly, learning from their day to day, um, actually, you know, sitting with them. We did multiple interviews. We talked to 17 people. Um, we had one on one sessions with these people, just kind of getting to know them and understanding their problems and um, and really trying to be in their shoes um, before we even started development. So this helped us inform a strategy. Um, and it was really fun because, as, as David mentioned, we had this, this cross-functional team but we also of technical skill sets, but we were also um, a team of uniformed officers and officers in training, as well as um, people from, the, from Red Hat, from Open Innovation Labs, and who were civilians. So, um, so we were able to kind of bring this cross-functional mindset, not only in our skills, but also in um, how we understood the problem space. Um, and that was just a really great experience that led us into developing our product strategy for uh, a new application, the Puckboard application. And so out of our research, we were able to do some validation um, where we defined personas. So we have two different personas. 
um, we actually were able to learn a whole bunch of things that we kind of didn't understand to begin with, um, including some assumptions that were incorrect. So um, when we came in, we were looking at certain personas and certain kind of people that we were trying to solve this problem for. And um, we, out of it, we came out with a whole different persona that we hadn't thought about um, and some, some really good insights about the problem space in addition to actions that we could take in uh, actually developing a solution. And so that led us to actually designing and testing a solution. So we did all kinds of um, pencil to paper type activities to help us understand where we could solve the best problems um, with technology and with user interface um, by improving an experience that was easy to use. Um, we looked at the top problems across different types of people so that when we started our solution, we could scale it quickly and that we were solving the best problems um, and the most valuable problems as far as what would make, um, what would actually help transform uh, the Department of Defense. And so, um, so some of our cycles were doing design sprints. Uh, we followed a motto of build, measure, learn, where we were, you know, putting things in front of users at low fidelity. Um, and it really helped us in developing the technical solution, um, which Haytham can tell us more about. Excellent. Thank you, Darcy. Uh, so what I want to talk about here is, is some of the DevOps principles that we really focused on in the Open Innovation Labs residency. The first being having a cross-functional team. So we had design, engineering, business stakeholders, security concerns, all of those different views represented early on in the development process. And what that allowed us to do was pri prioritize uh, all those different concerns into our backlog and verify that we're delivering the most value to our end users. Additionally, as Darcy mentioned, uh, build, measure, and learn was something that we tried to uh, always accomplish as we're delivering new features and capabilities. So working iteratively and ra with rapid feedback cycles allowed us to do that. Uh, again, our development team was continuously delivering uh, working code, new designs, and what that allowed us to do was to go back to our end users and validate that what we're building is meeting their needs, right? We're really validating that we're building the right thing. Another tenant we aspired to in our residency was automating everything in our stack uh, from the, de from the uh, deployment of all the technologies needed in our pipeline to all the OpenShift resources needed to build and deploy our application. We tried to capture all of that as infrastructure as code so that we can one, migrate to uh, future different OpenShift or Kubernetes clusters, but also have confidence that if we needed to tear down or spin up a new environment, we could do that from one source of truth. Additionally, to build up those cloud native skills as we were delivering uh, this Puckboard MVP, we used a lot of what we call pairing and mobbing uh, as the way in which we did our mentoring. So what that means is a developer might take a story off the backlog and pair with another developer or team member so that they can both learn those new skills while still delivering on that feature. Or even getting together as a full development team and mobbing on what new concepts we need to build and grow so that we can accomplish a new task. And finally, uh, one mindset that we tried to apply in our residency was the idea of experimenting to inform our strategy. That involves uh, doing technical research spikes or quick POCs or demos that allowed us to feel confident that, okay, this is a solution for this technical problem or challenge that we're uh, facing. So we're always trying to inform our strategy based on quick time boxed experimentation. So these are some of the principles that we really tried to focus on in the context of the residency. Additionally, another focus of our residency was shifting security concerns left. And what that means is really bringing security uh, concerns earlier in our development process. And the way we did that was by implementing a DevSecOps pipeline. Uh, a couple points here. One, what, what's foundational uh, to accomplishing or implementing a DevSecOps pipeline is developing with tests, right? We took a test-driven development approach to all the new stories and features we worked on in our backlog so that any new code commit, one, meets our specification of what we want that new code to be, but two, doesn't break any existing functionality. And, and the execution of those tests was automated as part of our pipeline. 
Additionally, we were checking for vulnerable dependencies we might be leveraging, uh, conducting static code analyses with SonarCube, and running end-to-end -end tests and, and automating penetration testing through the use of OWASP Zap. The, all these different tools allowed us to shift those security concerns left so that again, we're automating those checks anytime a new code uh, commit occurs uh, to our master branch. And finally, as, as something I discussed earlier as, as a tenant of something we tried to do throughout the residency was really have everything as code. And what I mean by that is uh, all the OpenShift resources needed to run our application successfully, uh, all the CI CD technologies like SonarCube that were needed to run uh, our pipeline from end to end, all those things were captured uh, with the use of Ansible and version controlled so that we could always spin up our environment. Uh, additionally, having everything as code really allowed us to, to adopt that experimentation mindset because if we wanted to try something new or do a quick POC or demo, we could spin up our environment with one command, uh, deploy our application, see how things work, and then tear it down and not be concerned that we've lost some configuration or, or some capability that we deployed in that one instance. Uh, so everything as code was something we really aspired to. And all these DevOps principles I think it allowed the team uh, to deliver value efficiently and confidently. And I'll hand it over to David to talk about how they've used these principles uh, in the progress they've made since the lab's residency. Thank you, Haytham. So the team had the skill set and training uh, that they developed during the residency. And with that, they needed to take the next steps. They have a great product uh, with the MVP, this application. And, and where do we go with that? And so the team, which again, the Air Force team, which was kind of the core development team, was out of Hickam Air Force Base in Hawaii. Uh, and so they, along with some Marine Corps uh, technical folks that were there in San Diego where the residency was stood up, they needed to get back to their families and their homes in, in uh, Hawaii. Uh, but they made a slight detour by taking a trip to Colorado, which is where they were able to take the MVP product and work with an infrastructure and platform team that the Air Force was standing up um, a DevSecOps pipeline uh, in an official Air Force network. And this team worked with that team uh, to take the, the work that they had done with the MVP uh, and migrate it to this tech stack that was compatible and allowed for continued development um, and also allowed for them to move into a data environment where they could use operational data in real time um, in the production environment. So that process was really important. Uh, a couple things uh, were happened along the way. One is uh, we were able to use the SIBR program to fund partner uh, fund a partner that um, helped the core development team out of Hickam continue this process by by bringing in some continuity and some civilian skills uh, to match the skills that they were building uh, that the uniform team had. Um, the other thing that, uh, that happened that was, was kind of key and important and, and certainly paid off later on is that they wanted to keep the team together. And so you have these Marine Corps uh, technical folks there in, or, or folks that had developed technical skills there in San Diego that were important parts of the project, important members of the team. Um, and they were able to find a way to keep a development environment open uh, so that they could do remote development and keep these members part of the team. And so from there, that team uh, went back to Hawaii, implemented the software and the application in an operational setting, um, and that moved to C-17s in addition to continuing to support the MV-22s, uh, the Ospreys. Uh, they, they, they migrated their user-centered approach team to support the Kanahoa Bay uh, Marine Corps there in Hawaii. So that was uh, local and that made for some that made it uh, slightly more, that made it more seamless in terms of the uh, continued development process. And then the team, as I said, uh, from Hickam, uh, focused on their own community and brought it um, operationally to the C-17 community um, at where it's being used today there in Hickam and also in Charleston Air Force Base, um, and we're scaling beyond that. So where the, where the team is today, they brought that team back home to Hickam, the core development team. They managed to keep members of the Marine Corps uh, and actually onboarded a couple of other folks onto the team for development. And so now the team is uh, back home, developing, continued to, 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 to build towards operational capability. 
So you can see a, a, a picture of the product as it exists now. Uh, this is actually old. Uh, this is a copy of the product from a couple of months ago. Uh, but you can see that uh, it is automated. Um, the, it's simple to use. It's, uh, the operators actually enjoy using the software. And, and many of the things that took them literally hours will take them seconds to minutes today. Um, the team's working with the US Air Force AI Accelerator Program with MIT. And so they are uh, funding AI ML research to bring optimization tools and techniques to the data and the software. Um, that, those have been implemented in many cases, and there's a wonderful roadmap looking out into the future for how we do more and more of that, um, taking the burden off the human so there's less chance for manual mistakes to be made. Um, and we can increase the speed and increase the quality of the optimizations that, that, are, that are being um, built for the scheduling. You can also see the team has grown. So through the CIBR process, they were able to get some funding that allowed them to build that um, uh, kind of core uh, base that expanded the military team. They were able to onboard some additional military folks, um, and they are a proper software development team that are recognized by the Air Force now as one of their coding teams. And then I mentioned earlier, it was important for the team to, to learn how to do um, some remote work to keep the members of the team that weren't able to, to, to be there locally in Hawaii uh, part of the project. And so in the process of doing that, they had already started thinking and strategizing for how we expand um, access to development platforms for other airmen, other coders that maybe have a skill set and can contribute, but maybe not be full time a part of the team. And so the skill set that the core team uh, developed, they were able to work with the uh, Air Force as the Air Force had to deal with COVID um, and fast track some of the um, strategies and tools that they found successful um, or tools like what they found successful um, and actually implement those across the Air Force. And so they were a core part of the Air Force's uh, solution to the COVID. Um, and what is relatively new is a uh, is the first uh, intern project that the Air Force has sponsored. So we now have 60 military uniformed coders uh, who have normal day or sorry, they have their day jobs um, in the military, but they went through an application process. They're onboarded. They're being they're being taught some skills, and then they're going to be given access and farmed out as interns to a number of various software teams to include the Tron core development team here. So that team, the development team of Puckboard will continue to grow as we bring new folks in and continue to, to teach them the skill sets that the Tron team has built as part of the residency. Thank you, David, and thank you everyone for joining us here today. It was a pleasure to share the story of Puckboard. If you want to know more about Open Innovation Labs, please visit red.ht labs.